a world in 20 to 30 years where we will see the death of death. We need to kill death before death, death kills us. And with those words, I want to introduce the first incredible panel of innovators. People working on science and technology to give us indefinite lifespans. Uh, we have four presenters from different parts of the world. We have Russia, we have the United Kingdom, and obviously we have the USA. Uh, these four incredible presenters, uh, let's begin with the first two from the USA. Elizabeth Parrish, or as we call her, call her Liz Parrish. She is the CEO of BioViva. Viva la revolucion! <laughs> BioViva, uh, which is a technology company bringing uh, gene therapy to the world. But most people might know her and will always remember her because she's patient zero. She volunteered herself to be the first human patient to be rejuvenated. Even though you will see her, she is incredibly beautiful, incredibly intelligent, and incredibly young. She wants to be younger, more intelligent, and even more beautiful. <laughs> With uh, uh, Liz Parrish, there will be another scientist, Bill Andrews who got his PhD. <laughs> Bill got his PhD at the University of Georgia in uh, molecular um, biology um, some time ago. And he's one of the world experts on telomeres. Telomeres, he has been working on this for three decades, one of the leading experts on this. He's an uh, ultramarathon runner. Uh, maybe he will tell us what that is. But he told me he's planning to run 200 miles. 200 miles. He said it's going to be like 70 hours, nonstop. And uh, he is the CEO and president of Sierra Sciences. And he has over 50 patents about telomeras and how they are going to help the world to live longer. So a welcome applause to Liz and Bill. So we're really happy to be here. I'm, of course, thrilled to be here. It's kind of fun to be the front of the roller coaster of speakers. Uh, there's no better place to be, right? So I'm coming at you, and you're coming at me. So today, we're going to talk about a few things, and we want to discuss aging. That's what we're all here for. So what is aging? Whether you're a scientist, or an architect, or a janitor, you know what aging is to you. It's a system, it's a process, and we see it right here in this picture. It's a young man growing old, biologically. We want you to get chronologically old, but not biologically old. It's the graying of hair, wrinkles, the atrophy of the brain and the muscles. How we picture ourselves aging is a little bit different than the reality. We picture things just slowing down. I'll continue to play basketball, I'll continue to go dancing, I'll continue to do all the things I do, but maybe just a little bit slower. But the truth looks something more like this. By the age of 80, most people in the United States are on 17 prescription drugs. 30% 30 per, 30 of those will have an adverse drug reaction to these pills. As a matter of fact, by the time people are about 65, they're on an average of over 10 prescription medications. So let's put this into perspective. The United States is only 5% of the global population. We take 75% of the prescription drugs available on the planet. We have the shortest lifespan of every industrialized country. We're doing something wrong. So the impact of an aging population, why would we look at this? Certainly we all personally have a stake in wanting to be youthful and strong and capable for a very long life. But what is the implications to society? If we look at this graph here, it shows us the percentage of age group of the population. And by the, age, by the year of 2020, there will be more people on the planet, the whole globe, over 65 than those under the age of five. 
So the under five-year-olds go on to being 15 and 25. They become the workforce as the 65-year-olds go into more atrophy and disease. They become 75 and 85. In some countries, we actually have one working payer paying for over 100 persons who are retired. Why is this happening? Life expectancy is increasing. As a matter of fact, globally, life expectancy has increased because of science and engineering by over 36 years. Congratulations. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, in the industrialized country, it's more like 50. We're living 50 years longer than we used to live. And like Bill said, we used to die predominantly of infectious disease. But what's happening is we're not just living longer, we're living old longer. And that's gumming up society. So why are the under fives declining? It's because this is a human phenomena. It's very special to humans. As we live longer, no matter where you look on the globe, what the race, religion, culture is, the longer you live, the less children you have. We see it everywhere. It's a very interesting phenomena. So what we're looking at right now is an unbalanced system, a system with less people paying into it and more people needing health care needs. But I want to ask Bill what he thinks aging is and uh, actually tell you what a great honor to speak with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, a lot of us kind of think that we, we're no different than old trucks sitting in a field. That we age because of the wind, the sun, the rain. And it's more, it's, we age because of the environment. And not, not just the external environment, but also our internal environment. But this has always bothered me. Because it just didn't make sense to me. If this was why we age, why is it that people that live in the North and South Poles age at the same rate as people who live on the equator when they're in very different environments? And why is it, it's always bothered me, why is it that dogs and cats age at different rates than humans when they're in the same environment? This all didn't make sense to me. The twos and twos didn't add up. But this is what a lot of people believed. Something else that always bothered me is that a major difference between us and old trucks sitting in a field is that we can repair our damage. We have cells that can divide. When we get a sunburn, that kills cells, but we have other cells that divide and replace those cells. And those cells are identical. When a cell divides, the two new daughter cells are identical to the parent cell. Trucks don't have it. But if we have that, why do we age? It just never made sense. Well, in the early 1960s, Leonard Hayflick discovered that actually human cells cannot divide indefinitely. They actually divide a few times, and then they stop, reaching a phase called senescence, or often referred to as the Hayflick limit. This is just a graph showing the number of days of human cells grown in a culture on the bottom graph and the y-axis is just showing the number of times these cells have divided. And you can see at first they grow linearly and then they level off. And if you take cells, skin cells, let's say, or any kind of cell, from a very young person, you'll find that these cells will divide about 50 to 100 times before they level off. But if you take cells from an old person, they'll only divide 10 to 20 times before they level off. What is going on here? This baffled me for a long time. It, it's how could a cell, when it divides to become two identical daughter cells, how can it know how many times it has already divided? How can it know how many divisions it has left? Something's going on inside these cells, and it just was baffling my mind and others. What's going on? I used to like to think of this as ride tickets at an amusement park. Somehow, inside these cells, there are these ride tickets. And every time a cell divides, you lose a ticket. Just like when you go to the amusement park. You get a bunch of tickets, you can run one ride after another, 
when you use up the last ticket, the ride's over. Well, something's happening inside our cells that is exactly identical to that. And lo and behold, we have now found that these ride tickets are found at the very tips of our chromosomes, called telomeres. And what I want to do, I want to go over this a little more carefully to explain what this is, because 99% of the world doesn't even know about these yet. But understand what a telomere is. They're very, very small things inside of us. We need to zoom in on a human being. And when we do so, the first thing we see is that a human is made up of about 100 trillion cells. And most of the theories on why we age say that we age because these cells age. And so we've got to figure out a way to prevent them from aging. Well, telomeres are much smaller than this. We've got to zoom in even further. We see that every cell contains a nuclei. And inside these nuclei are found our chromosomes, shown here in blue. Our chromosomes are where our genes are. Our genes are the things that give us our hair color, our eye color, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But if we zoom in on one of these chromosomes, we see that the chromosome is actually made up of two arms, a top arm and a bottom arm. And inside these arms are this very long molecule, like a string of beads. This molecule is called DNA. The beads are called bases. And this long strand of DNA is where our genes are. And it's called our DNA, our chromosomal DNA. Now think of this as a giant shoelace. It's about 100 million bases in length. Think of this as a shoelace. And what do you find at the very caps of your shoelaces? Very tips. You find these caps, and these caps protect your shoelaces. Well, that's exactly what's happening in our chromosomes. At the very tips of our chromosomal DNA are found caps called telomeres, shown here in yellow. If you zoom in on these telomeres, you find that a telomere is about 15,000 bases in length. Remember, chromosomes are about 100 million bases. Telomere is only 15,000, at least when we're first conceived. And here's where all the troubles begin. Here's where you start losing the ride tickets. Every single time your cell divides, the telomere gets a little bit shorter. And there's so many cell divisions required from going from a single cell embryo to a newborn baby, that before you're even born, your telomeres have shortened from 15,000 bases down to 10,000 bases. Well, that's okay. You know, you cut the caps of your shoelaces in half, your shoelaces are still okay. But the problem doesn't end there. We still have a lot of cell division to go. And so as we grow up and our cells divide and divide, our telomeres get shorter and shorter and shorter. And when telomeres get down to 5,000 bases, our cells lose the ability to function, and we die of old age. Let me go over that one more time, because this is really important. We are conceived at 15,000 bases, we are born at 10,000 bases, and we die of old age at 5,000 bases. And there's absolutely nothing we can do about this yet. No matter how well you eat or exercise, or do everything your doctors tell you to do, you cannot stop this shortening. And it's, it's the only clock of aging that I've ever heard of that made sense to control the aging process. And I used to think when, when all these environmental things and cells were dividing, there had to be some kind of clock that's ticking inside our cells, and this could be it. And so <clears throat> it's the only theory of aging that I said that, that has ever been able to explain this kind of stuff but <clears throat> it's a disease, it's, it's more than just aging, it causes diseases. And the best example of how telomeres affect the aging process is there are people, shown here, born with short telomeres. These kids suffer from a disease called progeria. And <clears throat> they suffer from so all the same age-related ailments that normal old people do. They die of old age at 20 from the same things we die of. If we could find a way to prevent this telomere shortening, or even to lengthen them, this could be a cure for this disease. And even though there's only 250 kids in the world at any one time that have this disease, we believe this would be really a great feather in our cap to know that we did something to help these kids. But, thank you. We, we aren't the only, they aren't the only ones. We all suffer from age-related diseases. It's now been shown in, that 
in scientifically peer-reviewed journals that almost every disease you've ever heard of is now controlled by this, or at least correlated, some are so shown to be controlled by, the length of your telomeres. And I believe that we're going to find eventually, after more studies are done, that practically every disease we've ever heard of is some, in some way controlled by the length of our telomeres. We've got to find a way to keep them long. And so, at this point, if we're going to figure out a way to do, keep them long, we've got to figure out why do telomeres shorten. And instead of going through advanced molecular biology of DNA replication and Okazaki fragments and things like that, I want to talk about DNA replication as an analog to, to a row of bricks on top of a brick wall. Think about this. When a cell divides to become two daughter cells, everything inside that cell needs to be duplicated so that these daughter cells are identical to that parent cell. Well, that includes that DNA molecule that I was telling you about. That DNA molecule needs to be duplicated. Think of that molecule as the top row of bricks on a brick wall, and we're going to just make a new row of bricks on the brick wall. So let's get rid of the other bricks and get rid of that cat. And now the cell is getting ready to divide, and we have to have a brick layer come along and make a new row of bricks so that can go to that first one. Now, this is a long, arduous process. Uh, we can't make mistakes because that will lead to mutations. And <clears throat> so this, this can take a while. And if we zoom in all the way to the end, because remember, we're very interested in the telomere, we're going to find out that we're, it was a bad decision to put that brick layer on top of the wall. Because when the brick layer reaches the end of the wall, he falls off. And he can't put a brick in the last place he was standing. This is actually happening in our chromosomes. The brick layer is called DNA polymerase 1. And when it makes a new copy, it can't duplicate the very tip of our chromosome. So the new chromosome is shorter. And this happens every time a cell divides. OK, so the cell is going to get ready to divide again. Again, the brick layer is going to come along. Again, the brick layer is going to fall off. And again, there's absolutely nothing we can do about this. Everything I mentioned before, eating, exercise, doing everything our doctor says, we can't stop this shortening. I call this basal level telomere shortening. It's the kind of thing we can't do anything about yet. But if you are so inclined that you feel like you're not aging fast enough, I got good news for you. Anything related to an unhealthy lifestyle, obesity, lack of exercise, uh, <clears throat> smoking, psychological stress, all these things have now been shown to actually create free radicals or inflammation that will actually accelerate the rate of your telomere shortening, and you will age faster. We see this. Smokers that have been smoking their whole lives look a lot older than their friends the same age. And so I call this accelerated telomere shortening. And the good news is, even though I said we couldn't do anything about the uh, basic level telomere shortening before, we can do something about this accelerated telomere shortening. And <clears throat> the number one thing that's published in scientifically peer-reviewed journal articles is exercise, endurance exercise. People that have been exercising for a long time end up having longer telomeres than their friends that don't. And, and don't be surprised to see that this list I'm going to show you right now, you've all heard this before. Every doctor knows these are the things you've got to do to stay well. And, and what's, of course, they are help, helping you keep your telomeres long. But exercise, antioxidants, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, quit smoking. Smoking causes a tremendous amount of uh, telomere shortening. Obesity does too, so lose weight. Reduce stress. Uh, reduce depression. And lo and behold, pessimism. Pessimism has now been shown in two scientific uh, peer-reviewed studies to show that it, if you don't believe you're going to live to be 100, you won't. And it's, it's in your telomeres. OK, so keep your telomeres long. Everything I just mentioned are things you can do right now. And Liz, I want you to tell everybody how reversing aging is going to make this world a better place. So the diseases up here on this graph uh, are things that you're familiar with. Uh, there are cancer, uh, there's uh, stroke, cardiovascular disease, uh, nephropathies, which is kidney failure, diabetes type 2, 
and the list goes on and on. And these are all driven by these processes of biological aging. So these are things that without intervention, without making a big change in pioneering to new technology, you will die of outside of cataracts. <laughs> uh, the impact globally of these problems are, is huge. The financial global impact of some of these diseases, uh, such as dementia, is almost a trillion dollars a year. Cardiovascular disease now in the U.S. is over $300 billion and estimated to also go up to a trillion dollars by the year 2030. And the list goes on. This is costly and it's expensive to have these diseases pervading our society. What if I told you over 100,000 people die of aging every day? It's a fact. And that means over three million people will die in a month. And then that means over 36 million people will die this year alone of aging. If this was an infectious disease, if this was an Ebola outbreak, if this was a massive case of influenza, we would panic and we would rush for a cure. We don't feel any differently about this. We think we should be taking this very seriously. <laughs> so I want to put the impact into perspective. So this graph is based on an average 50-year-old woman. There's probably some 50-year-old women out there now. I know that I'm approaching that age. So today, without intervention uh, in the States, that woman, it will probably live to about 81 years of age. She has had an addition of lifespan because of good scientific technology moving forward. But if we cured cancer today, cancer alone, it would only add a few more years to her life, believe it or not. It would be an impact. She would not die of cancer, but she would die of another symptom of aging. True fact. If we cured heart disease today, we'd extend her life even more. Okay, but not too much, but it would be fantastic. These are things that people are working on and we would love to have a cure for them. If we actually combined a cure, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, we get a big bang for the buck. We add over 40 years of life. But if we were just to slow aging, slow the biological process of aging, we would gain over 60 years to her life. And that's pretty fantastic. But what if we didn't just slow it? What if we can reverse it? What if we cured aging? Where would you put the dial then? So Bill, can you tell us about that science of curing aging? Well, let me start off with saying that there's already a lot that's been done to let's say, cure aging. I mean, these people, for example, they're really good examples of how, the, how 65 is the new 45. We're all exercising more, we're taking supplements, we're seeing the right doctors, and this is an example of people that have done a really good job of taking care of themselves. Now, <clears throat> ever since I've been 10 years old, this isn't what I wanted. When I turned 65, I want to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what I have been working on almost my entire life. Okay, so there's a lot of things that happen when we age. Uh, you know, we have a list on and on. Lots of scientists are working on oxidative stress, mitochondria dysfunction, uh, accumulation of damage, things that occur, some that may be the cause of aging, some may be the result of aging. And so people are looking at biomarkers. And I'm glad they're all doing it. I personally like to keep things a little simple. I like to think of, what did I think of aging when I was 10 years old? So, so instead of spending a lot of time looking at a lot of biomarkers, I want to know, is there anybody here that doesn't know which photo of Betty White was taken first? <laughs> okay, we all know what aging is. That's what aging is. And my definition of curing aging is I want to see Betty White come out here and walk out and look like that again. That's the cure for aging. <laughs> okay, now there's a lot of causes of aging. There's a lot of things we have to do. 
one of the things that I think absolutely has to be done is figure out a way to prevent our telomere shortening. Because if we could do all these other things too, but we're also going to have to figure out a way to stop the telomeres because the telomeres are still getting shorter. This is a fact. Every lab in the world knows working with human cells in petri dishes, telomeres get shorter. We've seen it in people looking at tissue samples too. Telomeres get shorter, so we have to solve this problem. So this is where I work. I look at trying to figure out how to solve the telomere part because I want to do my part in the global effort to cure aging. So I see there's two options to do this. One is to provide our bodies with cells that have long telomeres. And you'll hear other people talking about ways of doing this. Then we can also look at ways of lengthening the telomeres in the cells we already have. And this is where I'm putting my focus right now. I would like to see someday a pill or something like that that gets inside of us and lengthens our telomeres and makes us young again. In our reproductive cells, our, our reproductive cells divide and divide and the telomeres don't get shorter. And you gotta think about it, this is important because if they did, our children will be born with shorter telomeres than we have. And their kids will be born with shorter telomeres than them. And we would be extinct as a species after six or seven generations. So our reproductive cells have to have figured out a way to prevent telomere shortening. When so studying this in the mid-1990s, we discovered this enzyme called telomerase. This is a cartoon showing the DNA is a super helix, the green thing there, and at the very tip of the DNA is found a factory looking thing that's lengthening the telomere, adding bases on to make it longer. That enzyme is called telomerase. Telomerase, okay, so inside most cells, every time a cell divides, the telomeres get shorter and the clock ticks once. Cell divides again, the clock ticks again. Okay, in our reproductive cells, yes, the clock still ticks, the telomeres still get shorter when the cell divides, but telomerase pushes it back a tick. Cell divides again, telomerase pushes it back a tick. To explain it in a different way, let's go back to this bricklaying model. Inside our reproductive cells, that bricklayer still falls off at the end of that wall when he gets there, but like an angel, telomerase comes in and replaces that brick. <laughs> and that's what's happening in our reproductive cells and that's why the telomeres don't get shorter. I wanna jump ahead and tell you something a little bit. We have found that if we put a lot of telomerase into the cells, the next top row of bricks gets longer than the bottom one and that's why we are now seeing reversal of aging. And I'll come back to that in a second. But what I wanna do is I wanna say that Ron, Dr. Rhonda Pennell at Harvard recently engineered mice, did extensive engineering of mice so that he could make it so that he could cause the cells to produce telomerase or not produce telomerase at his will. So he let these mice get really, really old. He then fed them a substance that made the telomerase get produced in all the cells. Telomeres got a lot longer and these mice got younger in almost every way measurable that you can imagine. I think this is the best support of concept. I don't want to say proof of concept because humans aren't mice. But this is the best support of concept I've ever seen for the fact that we could reverse aging. And what I really like here was that these, the cognitive abilities of these mice came back too, suggesting maybe we might even be able to cure Alzheimer's. But who knows? We have a lot of research yet to do. Now, the problem is we can't do this in humans. It, it was extensive engineering of these mice and so we gotta find some other way of producing telomerase inside of our cells. And so at my company, Sierra Sciences, this is what we're doing. We're looking at the telomerase gene. The gray bar here is showing the DNA. The blue part is the gene, just like we have a gene that produces eye color, hair color, we have a gene that produces telomerase. This is what's happening inside of our reproductive cells. The gene is producing telomerase. Now notice there's this regulatory element next to the gene. Every gene has one of these. It's like a light switch. Genes turn on and off just like you turn lights off on in a room. Okay, in our reproductive cells, that switch is turned on, so the cells are producing telomerase. And every cell in our body has the gene. It's just that in all the other cells in our body, there's a protein that binds this regulatory element and shuts it off. This protein is called a repressor. 
So what we've been doing for the last 15 plus years in my company is we've been looking for molecules, chemicals, natural products, anything that will actually get inside the cell, bind to that repressor, dislodge it, and turn the telomerase gene back on again. We have found a lot of things, as I'll mention in a minute, but I want you to think of this switch as a dimmer switch. Some things will turn it on a little bit, some will turn it on more. So you can, you got some system of making more or less, uh, unfortunately you don't want less, but sometimes that's all you get. Okay, so <clears throat> this is pictures of our labs. So we have robotic systems, so we're doing a lot of high throughput screening using uh, essentially artificial intelligence, robotics and stuff like that to, to test samples. We have tested over 400,000 samples. It's also part human. We have a lot of humans working in our company, too. Um, and in testing the 400,000 different chemicals and natural products and stuff, we have found 39 different natural products that will actually do this. We'll get inside the cell, dislodge that repressor, and turn the gene on. And we have found over 900 different synthetic products. And some of both of these, some natural products and synthetic products, are now commercially available. So I want to ask you a question. Why don't we see 65-year-old people walking around looking like they're 24 if we already have these things? Well, a lot of people think we're going to, but we're not yet. And that's because telomere shortening and lengthening is like a tug of war. We have our shorteners and we have our lengtheners. So constantly this is going on back and forth in any cell that's producing telomerase. But in 99.99% of all of our cells, we don't have any lengtheners. We only have shorteners. So we've got this constant pulling to shorten our telomeres going on. As I'd mentioned before when I was talking, there are things we can do to reduce that rate of uh, telomere shortening by reducing the number of people pulling. But we can't get below a certain basal level, at least not yet. So we always are losing this tug of war. We have the ability just to slow it down by healthy lifestyles. Okay, what, what do we really want? We want somebody pulling on the other side. And that's what these natural products and synthetic chemicals that we have discovered do. But they don't win the tug of war, as shown here in this tug of war here. We still have less people pulling to lengthen than we do to shorten. And that's why, even though we have telomerase inducers, they're called, that are on the market now, they aren't causing reversal aging, but they are slowing it down, most likely. Okay, so what we really want to do next is we want to make this a tie. That will stop aging, hopefully. Every, remember, everything's still a theory. There's been support in, in vitro and in mouse studies, but we haven't done this in humans yet. Now, a lot of people out there are selling products. They say do this. will stop the telomere shortening. Don't believe it. It does not exist. Now, even more important than this, we want to add more people to the lengtheners so the telomeres actually get longer. This is when we expect to see human age reversal. And again, there's products out there that say they'll do that. I can tell you, I haven't seen any here, okay? But there are products out there, you can find them on Google and things like that, where they say they're lengthening your telomeres, and they don't. Nothing like that exists, and I'm the expert on that. But there is actually, okay, so when I, what I was just saying, there's no natural products or chemicals. But there is gene therapy. Gene therapy, we've actually been doing gene therapy on cells for 20 years now. And we've been showing that we can actually lengthen the telomeres. And that there's more lengtheners and shorteners. And as a result, the cells get younger. But it's only recently that gene therapy has become safe enough to actually do. And so, Using gene therapy, we have now extended the Hayflick limit. Remember I showed you that Hayflick limit before? Well, this is actual data from my lab using gene therapy, of human cells grown in a petri dish, and when we treat them with this gene therapy, those cells don't level off. They just keep growing and growing and growing. <laughs> We're close. We're very close. Okay, not only has this exceeded the Hayflick limit, it has reversed aging in human tissues. Human skin grown on the back of a mouse, treated with telomerase, has gotten younger in every way imaginable. And as I already showed you in the video, 
We've already, or at least Dr. Rhonda Pinnell, has reversed aging in mice, and so does Dr. Maria Blasco in Spain. She's done some studies in like this too, showing the same kind of things. Something I haven't mentioned is Dr. Rhonda Pinnell has also shown that when he kept the telomeres long, some of the other theories on why, why we age kind of were reduced. And that, that was most, mostly oxidative stress and mitochondria dysfunction. So it might be that telomeres might play a bigger role than we thought, but we don't know and we won't know until we try. But <clears throat> Liz, why don't you tell everybody what we're doing with uh, gene therapy? Absolutely. So now things get exciting. <laughs> You've heard how terrible life is and how your biology is trying to kill you, so what are we going to do about it? Well, I'm particularly interested in the gene therapy that Bill was talking about, and I was so interested that I actually took a safety dose of it to make sure that it was safe in a human body. I was the first person to do that. <laughs> And lo and behold, I feel really great. And uh, we didn't see any of the things that we worried about. We'll talk about that later. So nothing oh, I, yeah, else had ever done that. I just want to say that nothing else has ever done that. A lot of people, when I did the gene therapy, they said, oh, no, you couldn't have, because that's kind of like magic. That doesn't exist. That's something that we do in research, maybe, but it's not in humans. But actually, there's hundreds of people in clinical trials with gene therapy right now. Okay, and it's going smashingly. And as a matter of fact, in the Western world, we have two approved gene therapies. We've got Glybera, which is a lipoprotein lipase deficiency gene therapy. And last year, a woman was treated with 40 injections to a full cure. She no longer has the disease. <laughs> Stromvelis, which is a GSK product, is actually a severe combined immunity disorder uh, treatment, and it is passed this year to a full cure. I want you to put things into perspective a little bit. The pharmaceutical industry has given us 97% of amelioration of disease in their products, only 3% cures. Right now, going through clinical trials are six cures for monogenic disease. <laughs> this is exponential technology, okay? So it's real and it's coming to a neighborhood near you. And one of the reasons that's going to happen is because my company, that is a technology company, meaning that we are entrusted to you to look for any gene therapy or treatment that might reverse your aging. Sierra Sciences, the experts in telomerase induction and uh, who they have been working with gene therapies for, for absolutely uh, how many years? 30 years. 30 years. And Chase Life Extension Foundation, who are a fantastic man management unit, are coming together to bring you BioViva Fiji. <laughs> it seems like a long ways away, but it's worth the trip. We want to offer gene therapy to the world, and we're actually going to be the first company to do it in clinic, to offer you an alternative. So we're very excited about this. <laughs> ASAP. <You> just, <laughs> and we're so excited about this that we're already con considering what preventative medicine in gene therapy is. So we know that we're going to start blurring the lines in the future between enhancement and preventative medicine. And we're excited about that. We look forward to a day where we can really do the cost savings and treat you before you even get sick. But there's more news than that, and Bill's going to tell you what that news is now. <laughs> well, this is exciting because just nine days ago, we got a patent approved it's the very first patent on the use of gene therapy to deliver telomerase to human cells. <laughs> so this will enable us to actually make this a reality. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, so there was one concern that I heard from people all over the world when I did my therapy, and that was, does telomerase cause cancer? I think Bill will answer that for us. Well, actually, I sometimes speak for an hour at con cancer conferences on this and stuff, so it's a li pretty long subject, but let me just make it really short right now. There are actually no studies that show telomerase causes cancer. That's just a, a theory that some people have and been just, has been floating around. There's no studies that show that telomerase causes cancer. But there's lots of studies that show that lack of telomerase causes cancer. 
And that's what our problem is. We get cancer right now because our telomeres get short. We've got to keep them long. And if anybody wants to discuss this in more detail, I am absolutely, I'd love to discuss this subject, but we don't have time right now. I want to make, just make a point is that I believe there is nothing wrong with telomerase and lengthening our telomeres. We are going to see a great future. Everything about us, our lives are going to be better. We're going to be healthier. We're going to live longer. We're going to be younger. And thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>